Hi, this is Sandra, and in this video, I want to show you how to correctly handle errors for if the user doesn't type in a number when you expect it. So to handle errors when parsing, when converting from a string into a number. So just working on the previous example here, just run this to show you what can go wrong. If I type in a letter here instead of a number, and that one we'll put in a number, and I hit calculate. So from the GUI that's running, nothing appears to have happened, but we can see down below in the, the output, if we just scroll in or zoom in here, you can see that a number format exception to occur for the input string AS. So the code is called double dot parse double, and when it can't convert the string correctly into a number, it will throw a number format exception. Now I'm just going to show you in the API where that comes from. So I have the Java 11 API here. Everything is separated into modules and the Java base class is what the code that we're working off, the API for the standard edition. In there, we're of the Java Lang package. That's where the double class is kept. And if I scroll down to double, so we're using a method for turn, converting from a string into a double. We're using parse double. And you can see here, it might throw a number format exception if the string does not contain a parsable double. Now, you can use that method, parse double, or there's another method called value of, which takes in a string and returns a double. I'm going to use that one instead because value of, it'll trim off any white spaces either side of the number if there are any. So that's a little bit more useful than the parse double. Now, back into the code. So behind the calculate button, I have num1, double dot parse double, and num2. I'm going to change that to value of, and the same here. As I said, it will it'll trim off any uh, spaces either side of the number. Now, it might throw a number format exception. This is known as an unchecked exception. So you don't have to write code, a try catch around your code to deal with it. If it happens, it will um, print off the stack trace there in the output window. So it's unchecked. You don't have to, to deal with it. But in this case, it's a good idea to deal with it. So we're going to say, try the following code. And I'm aware that it might throw a number format exception. I give that a name E. <clears throat> now, I'm also going to move in as well the code underneath that sets the text into the, the label. So if these two lines work OK, the numbers will be added together and the result will go in the label. If one of these lines doesn't work as if as in it might throw the exception, it will jump down to the number format exception. So what I want to do is I want to still do um, an e.printStack trace. So I'll get that stack trace printed in the output window and I can see what's gone wrong. So that's as the programmer, I want to see that. But I want to tell the user that, that something has gone wrong. So for that, I'm going to use a J option pane dot show. Now I can use dot show message dialog. And I'm using the second one here because I can specify that the message type is an error message and it will it'll give it the appropriate icon for that. So the first component, the parent component, this frame, so the message dialog will appear in the middle of this frame. The message um, error, please input a number in both text, in both text fields. The title, so I'm just going to put an error there, error uh, invalid input just so you can see the title on top. And now this is the message type. So this, this needs to be a constant. They're stored in the same class as the method I'm calling, which is jOptionPane. jOptionPane dot and anything that ends in message here. So I'm going to use that error message. Now this has gone way off the line here. So I'm just going to move this down. I don't like to split in the middle of the strings. So that's why I've gone before it there. Now let's see if this works okay. Now, so if I make sure it works properly, first of all, 22 and 33, it's 55. 
if I type in letters here by accident and hit calculate error please input a number in both text fields so that's my message that is the message type so the constant at the end of the method I'm calling and that is the typo there on top and click OK now I still did a print stack trace and that's for me the programmer just to check that what went wrong is what I expected uh, number format exception for the input st string hj perfect now I'm running that again so when you catch an exception what you're doing is you're allowing your program to carry on and, and, and the user can fix the problem so I have a try catch around um, the two parses so if the first one I don't input a proper value I will get an error and if I fix that and the second one if I don't put in a number that will appear there and when I do put in a proper number there the result is okay so when you catch an exception it's allowing the program to carry on tell the user what's gone wrong and then when this method finishes it will naturally bring them back to the graphical user interface where they can input the, the proper number there and that is how to deal with an errors from either the double dot value of or the double dot parse double method